What is a behavioral intervention? A behavioral intervention is any intervention that utilizes behavioral, cognitive, affective, or social processes to stimulate a change in an individual's or a group's behavior to promote their health and well-being. Behavioral intervention developers have an ambitious job to create the best possible behavioral interventions to achieve meaningful improvements in health and well-being. When I think about the stage model and introducing it to uh, an audience of, of junior scientists, um, I think of my own confusion early on uh, as, a, as a young scientist, seeing these various problems and, and being aware of theories in the world of, uh, of how I might create an intervention to address that problem, but feeling lost as to where to start. And what are the things that I, is there a checklist somewhere? Is there, a, is there some kind of map to get me from where I am now with a desire to help and some knowledge about what might help to having an intervention that's out in the world and uh, is effective and uh, widely adopted. And the beauty of the, the stage model is that it lays out, no matter where you are in that process, uh, what you should be doing to make sure that people further down the process can build on uh, on your work uh, and to make sure that your work is optimally beneficial to society. The NIH stage model is a conceptual framework that helps support this ambitious goal. It supports the development of maximally potent, maximally implementable interventions, those that achieve the greatest impact on health and well-being and that can be carried out with the greatest success in real-world settings. So when I use the stage model, it helps me from the beginning know that I'm developing an intervention that ultimately will be very well defined and very specific. So then if efficacy is demonstrated, I will know and have the knowledge to then inform clinicians at the next stages, whether it's under um, conditions of effectiveness testing um, or even implementation, I will know exactly what the intervention is specifically targeting and under what circumstances the intervention could be potentially modified, um, shortened um, for efficiency without necessarily affecting its um, fidelity or its um, efficacy. Understanding the principles governing the effects of the intervention helps us to know better under what circumstances and for whom the intervention should work and just as importantly, where and for whom the intervention would not be effective. It should also help us know better how to adapt the intervention without compromising potency, enabling us to create interventions that fit seamlessly into a range of real-world settings. Clearly, it's complex to devise interventions to work out what mechanisms to focus on. And the reality is, in any one behavior or condition we're interested in, there are gonna be multiple mechanisms. And the NIH stage model helps with this complexity because we can begin by focusing on one mechanism or maybe more, but it encourages us to be very precise in stating the mechanism, in measuring the mechanism, in working out how to activate or deactivate the mechanism. Now, this might sound slow, but I actually think it's so much more efficient than the current reality where we have, say in the context of mental illness, multi-component behavioral interventions. We don't know which of the components are the most effective and the most potent. And uh, we don't know which are most acceptable to providers and patients. So I think the NIH stage model helps us to break down the complexity. The problem is that what may seem obvious about why or how the intervention works may not have been directly tested. 
In other words, we might not know that the intervention engages a specific mechanistic target, and whether the changes produced by engaging this target directly cause the desired changes in clinical outcome. One of the questions that I've often received in doing work with community-based participatory research is, well, how do you know that the interventions that you're developing that have been developed to address specific concerns within this neighborhood or community, um, how do you know that it's going to work in another community, another neighborhood? By using a systematic approach for intervention development that targets specific interventions that are based on empirical findings showing that the mechanisms is related to the behavior, um, we have greater confidence that the work that we're doing um, within specific communities can be generalizable and scaled up and implemented across larger groups, larger communities, so that we can ultimately improve uh, minority health and health disparities across the country. You see a significant public health problem. You think a behavioral intervention could help, and you know of a theory upon which the intervention can be based. So you develop that intervention. You confirm that it works in a controlled environment, that it has efficacy. You plan to confirm that it can also work in the real world, that it is effective. The NIH stage model simply assigns terms to these activities so researchers can easily convey to each other what aspect of intervention development they are undertaking in any given research project. By encouraging intervention developers to explore the principles responsible for why their interventions work, the NIH stage model also encourages them to integrate basic research questions into any stage of the intervention development process, wherever it makes sense to do so. Thus, the NIH stage model integrates basic and applied research with each type of research informing the other. A focus on mechanism makes you flexible and can help your ultimate dissemination. Helps you not get wedded to a procedure, helps wedge you to a principle and a series of mechanisms that lets you pivot what your research is like, what disorder, what condition you're focusing on, and helps you make sure that you have a product that is naturally fluid and flexible. So there's lots of ways to get in to get the change you want uh, for the outcomes you want for your patients. It is actually very cool to be able to hone what you do. And if you're, if you're again, if you're attending to principle, not procedure, some of these shifts don't hurt your feelings. You don't have a single intervention that you fall in love with and by gosh, I'm gonna keep that intervention even if it doesn't work as well as I thought by being, again, focused on mechanism, it helps you be iterative, and iterative can be cool and can help you have a broader impact across the course of your career.